Hi, welcome to Power Apps Roadmaps. Today we are going to be building a Gantt chart style layout in Power Apps and some controls, a little form that will allow us to update the Gantt chart and view information in it. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is create a background for our Gantt chart and to do this we're going to create a blank horizontal uh, gallery and stretch out to the full width of the uh, screen and we want to set it to about half the height just approximately and uh, get that centered uh, in the middle of your screen and for the items we are going to create uh, our own little array um, and we want to put in the numbers 1 through 12 uh, which will represent our months, January through December. And uh, the reason that we want to use this is we're going to set a fill colour on the template uh, which is going to look after the... Uh, which is going to give us a sort of striped uh, background. So we take our array of 1 through to 12 which is January through December and we are going to apply a formula to the uh, template fill uh, operator on this element and the formula that we want is an if statement that says if the remainder for uh, this value is um, zero, uh, when divided by two is zero, then we want to set the fill color to black with a 0.1% uh, uh, opacity or a 10% opacity which is um, almost entirely see-through which gives us this very light grey colour and um, we want to be able to put in um, all 12 in there without any horizontal scrolling so having done a little bit of maths before Starting this video, I know that we want to set the width of each one of these to 108 pixels. So we have our uh, gallery with our template size of 108, which allows us to fit all 12 months into uh, the width of our screen. And best practice, of course, is to name the um, elements as we go along. Mm -hmm. Um, the next step that we want to take here is to start adding in uh, labels for the column headings. Mm. Uh, again, we want to set these to the width of these to 108 to match our column widths. And we know that that's about lined up there. And for this one, we are going to call it January. And center line, and probably set the weight to bold. Now, I did just finish saying that we want to name all of our um, elements, all of our components, so that it's easy to keep track of them. But for instance, for uh, things like this, where we don't, we don't have to do any calculations or any, anything with these labels. We, we're not going to have to reference the content of them um, further down the line. So, as a little trick, I like to um, group similar things and just, re and just name the group. Uh, and I will show you how to do that in just one second. Okay, so we now have all 12 months labeled and we just want to make sure that they are consistent um, we just want to make sure that they're sitting along the same alignment uh, certainly along the middle it's not, as long as they're sitting roughly over there but uh, yeah instead of naming all of these labels and taking up a lot of our time uh, what I'm going to do is group and then uh, rename this to uh, month labels and that takes care of that 
Um, great. So the next thing that we want to do is add in a new gallery. And this is going to be a blank um, vertical gallery. And this gallery is going to hold the items for our Gantt chart. This, is, this chart, this gallery is actually going to be our Gantt chart. And things will appear in here when we add them to our collection. We name this gallery to Gantt Tasks. And let's go about creating our form. So we're just going to put this to, together pretty quickly and we'll talk through it as we go. Uh, we want to have a start date. Um, start date. And we want to have an end date. We want to have a task name, so we will allow the user to um, add in. We also want to have we also want to have um, a task name, so we'll just create a regular text box for that one. Make it the same width and uh, try and keep these roughly up in the same distance. We we'll change the hint text here to. Um, the default text, sorry, we want to remove that um, and set our, and we're going to call this one task name. We are going to add a drop down box, um, but as we are going to be able to assign our um, tasks to a user, um, so let's call this one assign to and we want a status box as well and a drop down so we can select which status uh, again just in this demo we're going to be able to select between uh, active and completed tasks um, obviously that's uh, not really comprehensive enough for uh, a full blown Gantt chart but um, And we need a button to submit this. We're going to take these elements and add them to a collection that we're going to define. Um, it doesn't work if another user logs into the Power App, they won't see what's going on here. But like I said, this is just as a as a proof of concept, I suppose. Um, and again, we need to build some labels here so we can so that people understand what we're doing. Uh, so we can call this one start date. It is quite okay just to group them and we rename the group to uh, form labels. And we should rename our button that we added to task. And this is the formula that will add a, a, our data uh, into our collection. So the first part, there's there's really a couple parts to this formula here. Our first part is this, which is collect the, the collect function. And it is um, saying for the collection task list, I want you to populate these six fields with these values. So what I have here is a um, random number generator. We will we'll come back to that one in a, in a, in a couple of minutes. But the rest of them are the the, the fields that we've cre created in the form and the um, the element to, to take the value that we've selected there. So selected date for the date fields, text for the text input, and selected text dot value for the drop down menus, which returns the, the text that we're going to have in there. And then after that, there is um, a reset form, a reset call for all the form field elements uh, just to set them back to the default state. If we click over to view collections we can see that Power Apps has seen that we're using the collect function um, and has taken the, the name of the collection task list and established that there are six fields that it needs to 
uh, fill. Um, so let's created the framework for that here. Um, and we need to work on uh, filling in some information for the assigned to and uh, status. So um, for my items, I'm going to create my own array. Um, let me just skip back to this and we'll select items and instead of using the drop down sample we want an array that is five text strings our default one our first one is going to be hyphen select hyphen just so that it looks like it, it looks like a drop down where it's clear what's going on here and then uh, persons one through four if you hold down alt you can preview your uh, power app so I can see there by holding down alt and clicking the drop down there are the four persons uh, people that I have added to my array and for status we are only going to put in an array that contains uh, two selectable and like a third one like, like it's just select here items uh, we want to have select active and completed uh, so our default is going to be select and then inside there active and completed will be the options um yeah so let's take a quick look at how this works if we preview it and we have a start date and end date let's set this for a couple of days ahead Task name, we'll call it task one. We're going to assign it to uh, person one and we're going to set it as an active task, add task. So you can see that they all reset. This one didn't have far to go because it hadn't moved. And if we jump over to our collections, you can see that it has taken the values from the form fields. And for our ID, we have created a four digit random number. Um, check, taking a look at our formula here, uh, this random number will be between, I, uh, yeah, you can see this is what the random number looks like um, at the bottom here. Uh, the random number is generated as 0 0.86383114 um, and we want to multiply it by 10,000. And then we want to apply the round function to that to make sure that there's um, no decimal place, no numbers after the decimal place. Uh, and that's given us a relatively unique number. Uh, there is a chance that it will produce the same number twice, um, but for this example, it's not really uh, an issue. It won't really be an issue. Okay, uh, so now we have a working form that we know is adding things to our collection. Uh, the next stage is getting the items from the collection onto the screen. So we want to move back to the second gallery that we created, our um, blank um, vertical gallery. So uh, going back to our blank vertical gallery, Gantt tasks, we want to set the items to task list, the uh, collection that we created, and we're going to add a few labels in here, and it's going to make a stab at, at, at trying to figure out what we're doing, um, but it's not it's not going to get it to the, um, Let's let on just now, and we will set our four labels, and we want to set uh, a start and end date, which is very easy. We know that these, this is start date. And this one will be end date. Um, so let's label these as we go. End date. So let's label these as we go, and I'm going to uh, prepend them because we're all using uh, we're already using end date elsewhere in this. We are going to do end date, and uh, let's rename this one to start date. So that's the first two here. This one we are going to set to start days. We're going to 
This one we're going to label start days and this one I want to label end days. Um, okay, so we need a formula for this text box um, and the formula we're going to use is this it is the date difference between the 1st of January 2020 and the date value of our start date or our underscore start date label which is currently for this uh, for this uh, collection item the 19th of June 2020 June 19th and um, given that we start at zero we need to add one to get to the actual day of the day of the year uh, the 19th of June is the 171st day of the year without that it just says 170 which is not quite correct at this level one uh, one day won't end up being too noticeable but we might as well we might as well get ourselves to the to the right value and similarly we want to take this text box and we are going to set this to um, a very similar formula where we take the difference in date from the 1st of January 2020 and the value in the end date or the underscore end date sorry uh, label element and again plus one to get us to the actual day value and the end date the 22nd of June is day 174 of the year and we need so outside of these four we also want to have an indicator label these four are going to be hidden these are just little helper fields to so that we can see what's going on so let us create another label and i'm going to call this one i'll name it first uh, indicator great and the text i'm going to set to uh, task name you can see that the element that we, the um, so I'm going to set the element's name to task name. So this item dot task name because we're inside a gallery here, and we want the we're going to be playing with the x value and the um, width of this uh, element. So let's take a look at the x value first. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do now that we have our indicator label uh, set to a uh, text value set to the task name is we want to update the x value or where the uh, label sits on the x-axis the horizontal axis on our uh, power app in our gallery this is a formula that we're going to use to calculate the start position of our indicator label um, it's kind of simple uh, we're taking gantt tasks dot width so the width of the Gantt Tasks uh, Gallery and dividing that by 365 um, and when we multiply it by the value in our start days dot text this purple one here it's underlined we find the value if that was split into 365 um, blocks instead of it being 100% um, which block would be 171 and that is about here which you can see is just in the tail end of June which makes us about right it being that this is the, the 19th of June we're in that last week or so there um, so our next thing that we want to do is take the uh, is, is change the elements width so again back on our indicator um, element and we're going to uh, make sure that our width is selected here and we're going to change this um, absolute value and replace it with a formula um, and just to talk through what this formula is doing again we're breaking the width of Gantt tasks into 365 um, points and we are calculating the end days minus the start days to find a value uh, to find out how many days that we have going in here. Um, so 174 minus 171 and multiply that by the width of Gantt chart divided by 365 and that works out how far uh, the, the, what we want the width 
of this element to be and you can see because this is only uh, a couple days it's very short um, but when we add our next element we're going to, we're going to see that that's a little that's looking a little bit better for us um, and the last thing that we want to do here is we're going to select these four and we're going to turn them to invisible so select the four helper foods that we created and set them to invisible we don't need to see those um, Great, and let's, so let's go back to previewing our app and let's add in one with a further date. Let's grab the 1st of June and the end of July. Our task name is going to be Longer Tasks and we're going to assign that to Person 2 and again we'll make this one an active one just now. So you can see here it's taking up a bit more space. Let's go back in and, and make things look a little bit better. Uh, clearly, I had space for that one here, but you can see that's how much room we are given each row of our gallery, um, which is way more than we actually need. So let's bring that up. And if I select our first one here. Okay, so we can't... <clears throat> Okay, so we can't really see where these tasks end. We only have an idea of where these start. So let's grab the, the one that we can edit in this first item here, the template, and we're gonna change the fill color. Um, I'm gonna change it to this future color, but you can pick whichever one you want. And um, just again, for my own uh, style, I'm gonna pick white text and let's check, let's move the the font weight up to semi bold so it's a little bit more legible uh, and this is this is fine for me and you can see here uh, then that our start date and our end date are lining up okay so this is really coming together but as you can see uh, we're left with a position where if our task is too short um, then you can't really see all of the information that's, that's in there so let's build a view uh, a viewing panel down at the bottom here where we select one of these items the information gets loaded into the bottom uh, i'm going to start by drawing a, a shape um, so it's dialed into our icons here and i'm going to pick out the rectangle and let's move things down here and I am going to make this a little bit lighter. We'll just pick one of the default colors to get started. And again, name your elements. Uh, rename this one and call it uh, frame. And this is just going to store the information for us. So we need quite a few labels. Um, I will add them in. We're going to call this one task default. This one we want to be um, bold and let's make it a larger text, that's fine. And um, we need some more labels to go underneath. Um, and we're going to set this one just now to uh, task name, colon space, and below that. We're going to rename this, we're going to relabel this one to sign to. And let's take that, we'll leave us some space, we'll come back to that one. Start date. And end date. So that's accounting for all of our fields apart from the ID field and I'm going to extend the width of these so that they are bumping up against the neck, the field uh, to the right apart from this one which is bumping up against the edge of the um, the frame that, we, that we've added in and what we want to do here is um, add in, we're going to concatenate some of the 
uh, again, chart information into these labels. So let's grab our task name and we want to and um, the Gantt tasks selected item task name. And it knows, it knows how to process that. And for assign to, we want to do the same thing, but on this side, on, instead of task name, we want to change that to assign to. And we can copy this code here. Start date. So we will be updating that to say start date. This one we will be updating to say end date and status. You guessed it. We will update to status. Great. Um, so now if we play this and we select one, you can see that as I change, as I click between these two, you can see that the task names and the assigned version and the dates are changing. Um, great, so it doesn't, it no longer matters if we can't see that. Uh, we can now see all the information in the, in the stuff below. But we should really give ourselves some indicator as to which one we're, uh, we're, we're selecting. Um, so let's take a look at that uh, after we name our labels. Um, but once again, we are working in a situation where we don't need to reference these cells. Yeah, these um, uh, Once again, we find ourselves in a situation where we don't need to update them for um, Okay, so we have our task info pane here, which shows us the information that we're select the, uh, for the element that we're selecting at the top, for that item that we're selecting from the uh, collection. Um, but we need some way of indicating which one of these we're selecting to get this information. So let's grab our labels. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of these, and we're gonna group these all together. Again, we're, we don't need uh, we're not going to need to um, reference these in any formulas, so let's just group them and we'll rename these as info fields. Um, that will take care of. Um, let's rename these to info fields, and that looks after that. And um, let's look at adding another element to our Gantt tasks. <clears throat> And I am going to add a rectangle. So let's go back into our, make sure we're inside our um, gallery item here. And we're going to insert icons and scroll down our list to our shapes and add a rectangle. We want our rectangle to be the full width of the gallery. Um, <clears throat> but we want to set the fill to uh, be a very light gray. So change your fill element and we're gonna replace it with this, which we, you can remember from our, uh, our background Gantt chart here, RGB 000, 000 and an alpha value of 0.1 and a passive value of 10%. Um, that's that and then we will set the visible operation up. The, um, okay, but again, that's that's highlighting off, and we only want this rectangle uh, to be visible when the specific uh, item is being clicked on. So let's take a look at the visible operator. The visible. So let's take a look at the visible component of this element and we're going to change it um, to this formula here. And um, we are checking to see is Gantt chart selected and if Gantt charts is selected, is the selected ID the same as this item? So it is comparing 
um, it knows which one is selected and it's checking the ID, but it's also checking is this item's ID the same one. And you can see here that when it checks this one, it sees that the selected item is the second item in the list. Um, so that does not match. But, uh, that's not a match, so this is an invisible um, rectangle on this one. But if I switch, if I click, we now have a visual indicator which one of these am I reading this information for down there. Okay, so we're almost there. We need the ability to be able to delete an item from our collection um, as tasks are completed and disappear, then we want to kind of take care of that. <clears throat> Okay, so we are really almost finished now. We want to add in a, an option to delete. Um, that's an important part because just now we have a way of adding to the collection, but we don't have a way of deleting. So let's add a new button and we'll drag it down here as part of our um, task info. Um, it's obviously sitting outside everything else, but we can, we can sort that later on and we're gonna rename our button right away and rename it to delete item. Okay, so we have our button uh, named here and we're going to change the text value of it to delete item. Um, great, and we will change the on select and we need to put in a formula in here to delete uh, whichever one of these uh, items in the gallery uh, we have selected. So our formula is going to be removed from our collection task list. The first value, the first item that you can return if you filter task list by the ID field for Gantt task selected.id. So to work this backwards, find the ID of the selected item in our Gantt tasks gallery and compare that to the ID field in our task list collection. And we want to filter for the first entry that matches that. Okay, so the formula, uh, if we work it backwards, mm -hmm. we want to take the ID of the selected item in our Gantt tasks gallery, and we want to compare that to the ID field in our task list task list collection and we want to remove an item, an item from the task list collection when it's the first um, the first result for that for, for that selection here the selection process um, and that will update automatically everything that's on the screen so let's put that into practice right now uh, and we've decided that this one we don't actually need this task anymore. It's task one, it's person one, it's gone. We hit delete, it's, hit, it's removed. So now that that's deleted, we're gonna replace it with a new um, task instead. Uh, that was set for far too um, short a time and we're just, gonna, we're just gonna make a new one. So let's change our end date for our new entry and we're gonna make this run into September. This is gonna be a real long event. Um, New event, uh, or sorry, but I, we should stick with that new task, and we're going to uh, assign this to person three. But we're going to pretend for this for this last element that this is already completed. So let's add that in here, and you can see there we go. Our new task that starts about today and runs into September. But we don't have any real way of knowing immediately that this one has been completed other than the status down here. So let's take a look and see how we can work with that one. So let's take a look at the controls inside our um, templates indicator element. We've got it selected here and we want to check out the border thickness. Um, it's currently set to zero, but we're going to change that to be an if statement. Um, so let's, uh, let's do that. If this item dot um, status equals completed. Let me just double check. Completed. So 
So if this item dot status equals completed, then we want to set the value to two pixels, or else zero. Um, and you can see here we zoom in our newer task, which has which we did set to complete, now has the border and our first one which was set as active uh, does not have the border and I think probably for visibility we, we can make that a little bit thicker let's, even, let's go wild and make it 5 pixels, there's no denying that that task has been completed um, great, so again we're going in play and you can see this one's completed, it has the border this one is just an active one, no border around it. And if we want to add in one, we can go task three, sign this to version four and make it active. Again, it's not completed. It's just an active one, no border. Great. Um, Okay, so we have pretty much a running um, Gantt chart here, um, but the last thing that we want to look at is form validation, which is a super important uh, factor anytime you're dealing with inputting information to a database, or in this case, a, a, a Power Apps collection. And to show you what I mean, we have the ability just now, if this is still set to uh, June 19th, if I set the end date back in time on Sunday, February the 2nd, I don't bother putting in a task name, I don't bother assigning it, and I don't bother setting the status, I can currently still add that um, to my collection. And it may not look like much has changed, um, but it's definitely there. I can now select this blank one. There's the information, there's no task name, there's no assigned to, there's no status. There's a start date and there's an end date that predates the start date. And if I was to then go in and add in another element, another uh, task, and I did it properly by giving it a, um, get, filling out the information correctly, This one works, but there's still this gap for the one that is incorrect, the one that's invalid. So let's take a look at how we can uh, stop invalid entries from being added or look after, um, as best we can, uh, invalid entries from being added. So let's delete this from our gallery just now um, and skip out here. And this is coming down to the display mode of our button. Okay, this is the formula that we are going to use to calculate whether or not the button should be disabled or uh, able to be clicked. So let's take a look at what each part does here. If the selected date uh, for end date is greater than or equal to the start date selected date, um, that is a positive thing. We don't want it running if um the end date is set before the start date so like i said this is looking uh, this is comparing these two and making sure that the end date is at least the same as the start date if not later and the length of the task name dot text is greater than zero so we're checking the length of the value of the value that's been typed in there if it is um zero length if there's no value in there then that that will fail and we want to make sure that the assigned to um drop down box is not set to um hyphen select hyphen so we want to make sure that it's not set to our select and we want to make sure that the selected status uh, our uh, status level selected text value is also not set to hyphen select hyphen and if all of those are true so that's not set to select that's not set to select that is great uh, the length of this task name is greater than zero and the set this the end date is the same as or later than 
the start date, in that case, make the display mode for this button edit, or else make the display mode for this button disabled. And you can tell here already that it's updated to be disabled because there's a few things that, is, that it will be failing for. Uh, the task name is set to less than, uh, is set to zero because it's empty, and both of the drop downs by default are set to select. Um, so let's look at this in action. Yeah, these uh, these three fields all make sense. That this one has to have something in it. That is quite that's quite clear to most users, and people understand that select is not really a valid option um, for these two. But this one takes a little second longer to establish that. Oh, I have to update that date. So let's make things a little bit easier, um, and we can grab our end date element and we are going to have a look at the border color uh, operator here, uh, our, our border color control and we're going to change this again to another if statement. So we want to take this hot pink color and identify that hey this is this is not right otherwise we want to use the, the basic uh, blue color that the rest of the power app uses and we want to reuse this uh, for the icon background, which is the background behind the little calendar uh, here as well. So let's scroll through and grab icon background and again, we're going to update this. We no longer want to use just this blue. Um, we want to use this. Um, if the end date is before the start date, use this hot pink, otherwise uh, revert back to the sort of default blue color. And let's take a look at what we're dealing with now. So now immediately you can see uh, this. there's something wrong here with this date. Let's move this ahead of uh, June 19th. Let's set it to the 22nd of August. And there it's updated. Um, we now know that we can add in a task name. Task name uh, assigned to version one and active. Let's add it. There we go, this is looking great. And we can go in, we can delete these. Um, and yeah, I think the last thing that we want to do is make sure that it's showing them in the right order. A Gantt, Gantt charts, um, um, this, is the, this is the order that they're being added in, but that's not really how we want to look at our Gantt chart list. We want to uh, sort these by start date. So let's go back to our Gantt Tasks gallery and the item control and we want to sort our task list gallery by start date ascending. And there you can see in order of earliest to latest and we can add things in. Let's add one right at the start of the year went for um, a couple months, early task, assigned to version 3, then it's already complete, and it pushes everything down to get back to get into there, and if I make a late task in the year, that's in October, we know that we have to update that one, thank you end task indicator, let's set this one into December, task name, Christmas task, Assign this to version 4, this one's just active, add a task, there. It knows that it has to put that further back um, at the bottom of the list because it's the last chronologically. So let's take a look at where this could end up if you were continuing to add to it. Um, I've added a new field to the form called category and I've got three different categories in here, beginning, middle and end. Um, I've added uh, uh, category data and user data um, info box here where we can check um, the amount of the count of tasks and the average length of the tasks by category and by user. So let's see how this looks when we start to flesh it out a little bit. Let's make one task that lasts uh, two months. Uh, we'll call it task one, because all our creativity has gone into the Power App. Uh, we're gonna add this to the beginning. We're gonna assign this to our first user here and set it as active. 
Um, and there we go. We have um, the category listed outside the calendar. We have uh, an element here. We've got the, as you can see here, we have a vertical line to indicate uh, the current date. We have the category, uh, which is our first category beginning. Uh, I've moved the um, selected item bar to become like a hover uh, animation instead. And I've added the border as the selected item. Um, so we now have the ability, I've changed the status, the status uh, label to be a drop down menu where you can change between active and completed. And if I update that to say completed, uh, because we're now using the border just to show that it's selected, I've changed the completed uh, element to be a, a check mark that appears after the, uh, the item in our task list. So let's add in a few more. Again, we're, we're dealing with um, different categories here. So if I, if I change this date um, to be in the past, that's no use, it doesn't like it. So let's take, that's the 1st of March. Let's take this one into April. Uh, this is task two. We're going to assign this one to the middle, so it's going to be in a different category. So although it will be before chronologically this uh, this task, we know that it's going to appear below because it's going to be later in our categories. Um, or that's the that's the plan here. We'll assign it to Tom Brady, and we're going to set this one as active because we've just changed this one to be complete. So we have the different colors set for uh, the different categories. Um, and the information is there. You can see our user data. We have two people, Jollibee, Tom Brady. They each have one task, and you can see their average length. If we have a look at their categories, there's one task in uh, our beginning category, which lasts for 60 days, and 47 days for the one task in our middle one. Let's keep adding. Um, and you can show what it looks like when we actually have something to work with uh, for averages here. And task three, we'll assign that to the middle. We'll assign that to WTP Weatherman, active. Okay, um, so we can now start to see the middle as a different average because there's two days to work from here. Let's keep adding um, first of June into August, task four, category end, assign this one to swine spell. This one is completed, add, and it shuffles them around to make sure it's in the right place. Um, I think we're, we're using each um, employee here once only, so let's add in another one, one more task. Um, for, I'm going to set that earlier date so everything's not all clumped around today's day. Uh, task 5, set the category to beginning, just so we can make a little bit of diversity there. Uh, let's give some more work to Tom Brady and we'll set that one to active. So there's a huge task which has bumped up the average length of the tasks in the beginning category to 123.5 days. Um, Two tasks in the middle, average of 84.5 days, and in an average of 75 days for the one task in um, the, our third one. Um, user data, Jollibee has one task, Spike Swell has one task, WTP Weatherman has one task, Tom Brady has two tasks with an average of 117 days between them. You might notice that the text values here are bit lost with the background. I've set the um, colour to be a grey on there but the the background colour for each of these sections is set at random. Uh, sometimes they work. This, uh, the middle isn't too bad. Um, this, gre this green is not great at all with the grey text and this is pretty awful too. Um, so there'll be some work to do on that one to make sure that your text always stood out. Um, but 
you could there's a few of approaches you could do where um, you could add a second label, one for just the the size of your Gantt chart uh, item element, and another label just for the name, uh, and and control the background color and the text color that way. Um, if you have any questions about the more advanced version, or if you would like me to go over more detail anything in our original version, uh, if you have any questions on. Uh, the more advanced one there or this more simple Gantt chart, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you and uh, help you through and find a solution. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Uh, it's a bit long, I know it was a bit long, but it's a kind of novel um, solution in Power Apps uh, that I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks, bye-bye.